Hey Dan, this is Sean. Uh, on Friday we had a phone interview and it didn't go very well for me. I was very nervous and it was my first phone interview I ever had. I thought you were going to ask me questions about my resume and my experience with those things such as, you know, what difficulties did you have or what did you have to overcome to achieve these things. But my fatal flaw was assume it would be a casual technical conversation, I guess. Because in reality, now that I think about it, all you have to judge my skills and fit for census are those references I, I've given you, uh, the videos, and that piece of paper, my resume. So of course, if I say I've done spy communications on my senior design project or I2C communications, you're going to want to know technical details to really know whether or not I know anything about spy, or am I just bull, you know, bull crapping? But um, I'm not. I'm really not. I've been out of school for a while, and I, you know, sometimes your life takes strange turns, and I my knowledge is a little bit rusty. But I'm the type of person that may not always remember like the technical terms or. I may not remember right that instant how to do something if I haven't done it in a while, but I, all I need is a quick refresher and I'm there, I'm ready to go. And I don't stop, like, I'm not the person that stops either, so say I need a quick refresher, I'm going to go see it and I'm going to go, okay, I got that quick refresher. No, I'm not that person. I'm going to get that quick refresher and then I'm going to keep learning and I'm going to keep going and keep striving to make sure that doesn't happen again. Uh, I do that in all aspects of my life. So, uh, I just, basically, I've been, you know, looking over terms and stuff all week, and I'm going to continue to do it, because I just don't ever want to feel that incompetent in a phone interview again. But, on to the more important stuff. Um, I know you work with MSP 430s now. As you, I asked, and uh, I had two launch pads lying around. They're the G2553s. So I quit sh uh, set up a quick demo here to show you that Friday was a really a fluke. Uh, I wish I had two of, or more than two of these so I could have done a complex uh, spy setup with multiple devices, but I didn't. Um, I do have a lot of other devices and electronics but they're all 5 volts and these are 3.3 so they're just not going to be very compatible and I do not have any logic level converters. I did have two of them but they seem to have disappeared so either I lend them to someone or I lost them. <laughs> but uh, I really wanted to get this video to you at least a little bit I do have to show you that I'm a dedicated person and I know a bit more than I made it sound Friday and I really love to learn. I do make mistakes but I never let them hold me back or prevent me from completing my task. So like I said we have two launch pads here. This one right here is the master. This one is a slave. So when I press this button right here we see this LEDs on well, basically, this one will send a command to turn its LED on over here. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. And now they're both green. So it's sending a command to this one to tell it to turn on LED number 2. We press the button again, it's going to send it a command to tell it to turn on LED 1. And it, of course, does the same thing. Um, so we can, you know, do that as much as we like here. Now, in SPY, there is four wires. Um, I, there is also the BI wire, and the TI has the three wire SPY. But that's only good if you know you only are talking to one device. Uh, so here, I have one device, but I went ahead and this yellow wire here is the uh, slave select, or chip select, however you want to say it. So if we pull it off, um, this device is no longer, or well, 
the master is telling the slave it no longer wants to talk to it. So anything the master says to it right now is just going to completely ignore. So here we can see we're giving it commands and it's ignoring it. So we can put it back in and you can see it immediately jump to it because the master is still transmitting. So change it and now I also set up a timer on this one to just blink the LED. Um, now to do that I had I had originally had the SM clock or both these were this one was in low power mode zero which basically means the SM clock uh, the SM clock is on and the A clock the synchronous clock is on while the CPU is off and the main clock is off so this one was in low power mode four because it's a slave and TI has that neat feature where the slave can run off the master's clock However, to run the timer for the other part of the demo, I needed the SM clock. Well, I didn't need it, but I wanted to use it. So I went ahead and put them both in low, po low power mode zero. So if I press this button right here, we'll start seeing the LED blink. And there it goes. So if I communicate with it by telling it to change the LEDs again it's going to immediately stop doing that and change the LEDs so there it goes see everything works as normal and we can make it blink again and then we can stop it and then we can immediately go back to switching now that's what it's supposed to do when it stops is turn off completely um, but yeah, it's just a little demo here. Uh, I, I I really, really would like another interview with Census, and this video is already getting quite long. Uh, so I'm going to be studying hard. Um, ask away any questions you like when you see me. I hope I have an answer to them, as long as they're not too difficult. Um, even if they are too difficult, I can find the answer. I just may not be able to find it within the time frame of the interview but yeah there's my little inner or my little uh, demonstration and I have my code if you want me to send it to you or you like to see it and basically Dan if you could consider another interview I would appreciate it and I would not let you down and I think that right there if you gave me the interview would show you what type of person I am but alright, I'm going to wrap this up. So have a nice day and thank you.